Hey everybody, um, this I believe is going to be my last uh, update for my COVID recovery. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I went to the pulmonologist today. He said that my lungs are exchanging oxygen well, but they're still at a low capacity, which is why I become winded so easily. And only time will tell if that's uh, going to improve or be back to normal or whatever. But I don't think that there are going to be any more uh, big jumps in my uh, in my health or in my recovery. It'll all be incremental stuff, small stuff from here on out. And uh, as far as my voice goes, if it gets better, you'll notice it in uh, other videos. But I, I went back and looked at the videos I made because I knew I made some mistakes and some uh, things in those videos. And I want to clarify and correct some of those things. Starting with the dates, um, I, don't, I have no memory of virtually any of this. But uh, I started uh, coughing on uh, November 5th. And uh, in my mind, and as I said in the videos, I thought I went to the hospital that weekend. But I didn't. I didn't go to the hospital, to the ER until November 12th on a Thursday and uh, that's what the date they diagnosed me with pneumonia and COVID and sent me home. Then I went back and was admitted on Sunday the 15th. I don't remember much of that week uh, being at home. Uh, Chrissy and Jennifer said I argued with them about going to the hospital. I was afraid they'd put me on a ventilator and I'd die which is probably exactly what would have happened had they put me on a ventilator. And it's probably what would happen had I waited any longer to listen to them. And, uh, let's see here. Uh, it was one of the videos where I said that they, uh, when I said that they had taken me off the big oxygen deal and put me on the small tube and then put me back on it. I said it was because I was having panic attacks, but that wasn't the case. They put me back on it because I had developed uh, bacterial, double bacterial pneumonia. And it didn't have anything to do with panic attacks, even though I was accurate in when I said that whenever I had panic attacks, my oxygen would drop way down. It's because I was breathing abnormally. I uh, talked about lacking an appetite. There were times uh, that I was really hungry. And uh, I did eat. I remember a few times eating quite a bit eating some of the hospital food they brought me, and then later on eating some of the stuff the family brought me. But uh, there were times that I just didn't have the energy to eat. I couldn't even, I couldn't reach up to the table and take a bite of anything. I didn't even want to lift my hands up. I was so burnt out and so tired and sick. I just, I just couldn't. And uh, it's also obviously part of why I lost so much weight. Uh, right now, speaking of my weight, I'm back up to 180. I think I was at 180 when I did the last uh, video, recovery video. But that's where I still am. And uh, we'll see what happens. I'm not really, I don't really care if I gain a bunch of weight right now. I would like to get back up there, but I'd like to do it by building muscle, as I said. The worst part of it all was no contact. That was the worst part of the hospital stay. I had no contact with human beings except for the nurses. They were masked up and visored up and gloves and the she, the, the gowns they wore. When they left the room, they'd have to water, water them up, throw them away. It was so disheartening to see that people had to behave like that and dress up like that around me. And that once leaving my room, the stuff that they were wearing was probably medical waste or biohazard waste or something. It was disheartening. I said in one of my videos, the first one I think when I got home I was about two weeks after I got home. I got home on the 9th and I think I made that video on the 14th of December. And uh, I said I wasn't having panic attacks, but I was. Uh, I had them for about a month, and uh, I specifically remember the last one. I woke up thinking I couldn't breathe. You know, early in the morning, 
six, seven, eight o'clock. I don't even remember. And uh, I woke up just in a complete panic, thinking I couldn't breathe. Chrissy came in, held my hand. Jennifer was working, and uh, I had to get myself calmed down and take some Ativan. But that was the last one that I had. Anxiety continued to be a problem, kept me from sleeping, kept me from uh, being able to just relax and uh, do things I enjoyed doing, like watching TV and uh, reading. Uh, that is uh, much, much better now. I started taking Prozac a while back. Uh, my anxiety level had already decreased quite a bit, but I was still having a lot of, pro uh, a lot of trouble sleeping. So that's helped that. Uh, lacking sleep, I didn't talk a lot about it, but it was, it added to my anxiety, so it was a push me pull you kind of thing. I would feel less anxiety, then I couldn't sleep. I'd look at the clock at night and it was approaching my regular bedtime and I knew I wasn't going to be able to sleep. And uh, that created anxiety. I paced a lot, I was dragging that stupid oxygen around with me. And, uh, it was, uh, it was affecting uh, almost every part of my life at that time. Not sleeping. I know people out there that are watching this probably suffer with insomnia every once in a while. So you know what I'm talking about. It really, it really creates a lot of havoc in your mental well-being and your physical well-being. Uh, I can remember literally crying on Jennifer's shoulder and, uh, and to Chrissy and tell him, I just want to feel normal again. I feel so much more normal now. I know I'm not at 100%. I don't know what percent I'm at, 70, 80, I don't know. But I am feeling normal again in the respect that I can go do the things I like to do. I am not having anxiety issues. I can go shoot videos. I can go do pretty much whatever I want. And that's that's a, good, a very good thing. Uh, never discount the power of prayer and support. Uh, if you're not a person who believes in prayer, if you're not a spiritual person, I get that. I still appreciate your support and your good juju. And uh, through it all, all the videos I did, I really uh, strive to not include or involve politics or my political opinions or how I felt about masks or vaccines or any of that. Uh, I, this was about... What can happen to you should you contract this disease? It's not about what will happen to you, but it is what could possibly happen, especially if you're getting up in my age group. I was very healthy. I was out all the time. I was not sedentary at all. And look what it did to me. You just never know. It didn't affect anyone else I know as badly as it affected me. Uh, my friend... Uh, Joel Laverne, Callie went to school and she got pretty sick. She didn't have to go to the hospital, but she got really sick. This has a, it did affect so many people in so many different ways. I just don't want anyone to go through what I did if it can be avoided. Um, talking about my lungs not being up to capacity, I can still feel myself breathe. And, uh, it's not something I ever paid attention to. It's not something most people pay attention to. But for those of you who have suffered from this or suffer from asthma or COPD or whatever lung problems, breathing problems you have, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's not scary to me. I'm not at the point I can still take deep breaths. And uh, it's I can take relaxing breaths. But I can feel myself breathing. I can feel in my lungs aren't filling completely up. Uh, I can feel them stop, for lack of a better explanation. Uh, one thing I said that I suffered from anxiety for 40 years. That's not correct. For about 20 years, but never as seriously as I did during my stay in the hospital for the parts I can remember and after coming home for the first month. It was really, really bad. One of my videos, I don't even know why I brought it up. Um, I don't know how many of the people who watch this are even Supercross or Motocross fans, but I said Supercross wasn't going to happen this year in 2021. Well, it did, but it didn't happen normally. No races on the West Coast. So our family uh, didn't get to go to Anaheim 2 this year. I wouldn't have been able to go anyway. 
I was still in way too bad a shape. But nobody did. They have no West Coast rounds this year. The closest one is going to be Salt Lake City. And uh, I may try to get tickets and go up there. We'll see. May Probably not, though. Maybe I'll just wait till next year. I say it every time. Every time I make one of these videos. That it, you folks just don't know how much it means to me. And how much it meant to me all along. To have your support and prayers. And your uplifting comments on YouTube and on Facebook. Uh, people giving me a call. Uh, text messages, emails. Man, you have no idea how much that helped me. And I'm sure it helps other people too. I'm sure they know what I'm talking about. It's so awesome. Uh, Jennifer and Chrissy, I, mean, I love my whole family and I appreciate everybody's calls and visits. But Jennifer and Chrissy are the ones that had to live with me and uh, deal with this with me on a daily basis. Both while I was in the hospital, I called Jennifer almost every single night. And in the middle of the night when I was having panic attacks, uh, when I was lonely, she was so exhausted she had to be because I bothered her. I interrupted her sleep every night. And uh, their care for me after I came home was 24-7. Uh, every time, especially Chrissy, God bless her. Every time I'd make any kind of unusual noise, boy, she'd be right there on the spot asking me if I was okay. Even, you know, stub my toe or yawn or something. And my yawn sounds so unusual now. She'd come in and make sure I was okay. And uh, you have no idea, Jennifer, Chrissy, oh boy, thank you. You put up with so much for me. And uh, I appreciate it all. And uh, Cassie uh, comes over and visits me quite a bit. And, uh, you know, we were talking on the phone and, uh recently and she said she was so proud of me and Camilla called me and told me the same thing that they were so proud that I'm fighting so hard to get back to normal and not just sitting around feeling sorry for myself and playing the COVID card for uh, sympathy or whatever uh, I don't want to do that I never did I just want to get back to normal and get back to doing the things I enjoy doing and being healthy again and uh, I'm getting there getting there really it's I can't even really say it's slow it's slow, to, according to me, from my perception, but according to some of the doctors and some of the other people I talked to, I'm making pretty rapid progress, considering how sick I was. And uh, uh, Ariel called me. Uh, her fiance's uncle passed away from COVID. She went to the funeral. She called me on her way home and said she was so happy that uh, I was okay now. Because I came so close to dying, she was so afraid I would. And, uh, really so was I. Uh, but, uh, my children, uh, and Clarissa, Cameron, and Chrissy, everybody has talked about how glad they are that I'm okay. And it's always great to have that family support. And, uh, another thing about my voice, I can't remember if I talked about it in the last video. But since my vocal cords don't close the way they're supposed to, it leaves an opening. And the air, when I talk, goes up my throat, comes out my nose, and makes me sound weird. It's hard for people to understand me sometimes. I have to really concentrate on enunciating and getting the breath out properly when I'm trying to say certain things. So, uh, bear with me. Hopefully it'll get better on its own. If it doesn't, we'll pursue the other avenues, like I said. In my last video, it's also why I sound so breathless when I talk, because the air is escaping before I can use it to talk with. It's not a matter of my lungs being bad. So, uh, well, I think that's it. Yeah. But uh, again, thank you for all the prayers. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the subscriptions on YouTube. Uh, thank you for continuing to check out my channel. I still have a lot of really cool stuff coming up. Uh, I just did the post of the piece on the Bakersfield Yard switching with says JVR. A lot of people really enjoyed that, and I will try to get more of that. People seem to like switching. My channel's about pleasing you guys, not me. So I'll be out there shooting videos. Uh, I've been really busy in February, lots of doctor's appointments. I still have two more doctor's appointments this week. 
uh, tomorrow's Friday. I want tomorrow, and I have to go down to Santa Clarita for a CT scan for my throat on Sunday. And uh, the first uh, week or so of March, same thing, more appointments. As soon as I get a little spare time, and uh, I'll get back out there and start shooting again. Thank you again. Uh, if anything comes up, I'll uh, mention it in one of my videos. But as I said, from here on out, I believe that the uh, changes will just be uh, more minor and incremental, and I won't have any giant leaps and bounds like I have had in the past over the last couple of months. And uh, same thing, like I said, with my voice. If it gets better, it gets better. If it doesn't, we'll make it get better. Thank you again. God bless all of you. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content. And we will talk.